I've gone to Arctic regions since 1975, over 30 years. And our main purpose to go to the Arctic was to study the climate, the interaction with the ice. I'm uh, in the ice sheet more than 300, 330 year, a year, nearly each day, sometimes a couple, three times a day. So this is uh, like a, my second home. I'm an associate professor at the Niels Bohr Institute in the Center for Ice and Climate at the University of Copenhagen. And what I'm doing is I'm drilling ice cores. The uncertainty is not do we have sea level rise or not, because if you look at reports just two, three years ago, it was in the order of 40 centimeters to 80. The current estimate is in the order of 80 centimeter to one meter, even higher, 1.6, is a direct feedback of the greenhouse warming. This is unbelievable to see how much water under the ice. What we should fear is the rate of climate change. It's the emission of greenhouse gases are higher than in the past million years. These greenhouse gases will warm. Each time I come back to the big ice, uh, that uh, for me is the big change of my mind because uh, tons of water running from the surface down to the bottom. This is very scary for me, it's like uh, to see melting of the heart of the man. The Greenland ice cores actually are a template for climate in the northern hemisphere as such. So what we see here is in fact a table on climate events in the northern hemisphere. It's very important to say, for me to say that the ice cores have shown us and other geological evidence have shown us that climate has always been a dynamic thing. Climate change is permanent. It's always permanent because the Earth is a dynamic system. So we should not fear climate change as such. What we should fear is the rate of climate change. And that is what we might actually change with the emission of greenhouse gases. Because a lot of people would say, yeah, but it could be that the 20th century warming and what we see now is natural. Yes, it could be. But what, what if we make the natural climate variation even worse? Then we are getting in a bad situation. I did not think that I would see changes what I have seen over the last 10 years, for example, mainly in Greenland. If you go along the coast, what we have seen in the 80s are big glaciers flowing into the fjords, ice streams. Now, these glaciers look, you're hit with a big hammer. They are all cracked in small pieces because the ice is moving that faster into the oceans. Each day when I come back to the glacier, I take some documentation, take picture, and take some measure. I have a lot of data I can give for more information from my own experience. The tiny little extra push can push the system out of balance and actually that's one thing that we really do fear is that with the present uh, release of, 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 of greenhouse gases that you actually can risk to push the ball too far and then you will trigger a major climatic change over a very short time. We actually see the accelerate rate of the ice loss in Greenland. 50% of that ice loss is pure melt because our temperature is increasing. It's not only that the melting snow 
that runs off the green ice sheet, the meltwater also penetrates into the ice through cracks, through moulins. And that meltwater can lubricate for a short time the underside of the green ice sheet. We call this the dynamic response of Greenland in a warming climate. And if they accelerate towards the ocean, they break up in big icebergs. And that makes 50% of the ice loss we see. We have a big, big surprise when we come back last year. Like a smell of the gases come from the surface is like a methane gas. This is like an organic material coming from the bottom of the ice and that do that they smell of like a pig farmer. There's no doubt that simple physics dictates that these greenhouse gases will warm. How that warmth will spread on Earth and how the system will react to it, we don't know. We are extremely sensitive to even the smallest climatic change and that's why we have to be very careful what we do when we push the system. You might actually trigger something very unpleasant, like a sudden climatic change, that we know have happened. When we take all the melting of the glaciers, of the ice sheets, which is Greenland and Antarctica and ice caps, this gives us a response in the sea level rise. The current estimate is in the order of 80 centimeters to one meter, even higher, 1.6. If you look into the future, we can predict that in 100 years, we lose large portions of the coastline. Our population is very dense. Most megacities are along the coast, where you have millions and millions of people. This means these people have to migrate, move inland. If I were a bus driver and I had a bus load full of people and I was going down the road and I knew there was a curve coming and then somebody, you know, patted me on the shoulder and says, I think the road is icy. Would I then continue full speed or would I just apply the brakes to make sure I could make the curve? I would adjust the brakes, and I think the politicians should do that too. The decision makers, the voters, apply the brakes to the emissions of greenhouse gases to make sure that we don't all crash in the coming curve.